Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you go back to the early days of the channel, you'll see videos of me attempting to game on an AMD A43300 APU. This low end part gave me my first taste of PC gaming and even though it could only rarely offer 30 FPS at 1024x768 or lower, it was still fun to try and game on. I remember completing both Fallout 3 and Dishonored using nothing but the onboard 6410D graphics. Processors have come a long way since then, AMD's Ryzen APUs have made gaming without a discrete graphics card a lot more pleasant, for example. At the time of this video, one of, if not the best onboard solution can be found within systems like this one, the Minisforum UM690. This tiny machine packs huge amounts of power thanks to its 8-core Ryzen 6900HX, 16 gigs of 4800MHz DDR5, and RDNA 2 based Radeon 680M. You can pre-purchase this machine right now, either as I've got it configured, or with up to 64 gigs of RAM. Buying it bare bones is even an option if you want to add your own memory and storage later on. I've been using this one for a couple of weeks and one thing's for sure it has not disappointed me. The power of the processor means it's been solid for editing and rendering, but what impresses me the most is that it can play modern AAA games at 1080p. We don't have to enable FSR or run things at 50% res scaling either for a plus 30 or even 60 FPS in some titles. As I said before, I believe that at the time of this video the 680M is the best integrated graphics solution that exists right now, and while I was playing a few of my favourites today, I got to thinking about how the 680M stacks up against what is one of the weakest discrete desktop graphics cards on the market, the GTX 1630. Sure you can still buy GT 710s, GT 1030s and sometimes the odd Radeon R7 even pops up for under 50 quid, but the 1630 is a much newer card that is pretty much available everywhere. In my review of this I said that I was a fan of Palette's design, but the GPU itself was a bit of a letdown. We're talking 1050 Ti levels of performance really, sometimes less than to be honest. That said, this seems like the perfect candidate for the tiny Minisforum machine to go up against. The gameplay results achievable by the 680M are impressive for the most part because we don't have a discrete or external GPU, but there's also an element of novelty here. It's fun to download the most demanding titles that you can think of and fire them up at 1080p to see if this setup will hold up, especially when it's easy to go into every game, assuming that it isn't going to run well. Before we talk about any comparisons I just wanted to continue on with the benchmarks recorded directly from the UM690 here to give you an idea of what it can do. When I first powered on this machine and went into the BIOS I noticed that the VRAM limit was set to 2 gigabytes. You can change this to anywhere between 512 megabytes and 8 gigs but your best bet is to go with auto. You can leave it as it is or even choose 8 gigabytes but this gave me a low system memory warning in Forza because we'd pretty much reserved 8 gigs for the iGPU. Leaving it at auto will mean that each game will take what it needs and that might actually be the case anyway if you leave it at 2 gigs. I found that a lot of the time we were limited to lower settings anyway which won't often exceed 4 gigs of usage. Of our 6 tested games today, it had to be Cyberpunk, Spider-Man and Crisis Remastered that impressed me the most. So then, let's switch to the GTX 1630. I'm using a Ryzen 7 5700G with this, which is the closest desktop equivalent to the 6900HX that I have according to Cinebench, but it doesn't really matter because we will still be GPU limited. Just like the Ryzen 6900HX allowed the 680M to reach its maximum potential, the 5700G here will do the same with the 1630. The following comparative results are the outcome of both GPUs working at their maximum while retaining stock speeds. Let's talk about some comparative results then. So for the first result here we have Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p low. Now the Radeon 680M found within the Ryzen chip inside the Minisforum PC averaged 75 FPS with the in-game benchmark test and this is very impressive considering we are running at 1080p, a resolution that I've stuck with throughout. This actually beat the GTX 630, sorry, of course it would, the 1630 by, well, at least 10 
FPS and the 1 and 0.1% lows were much better with the iGPU as well. Cyberpunk 2077 at the lowest settings, again with 1080p now, and again the Radeon 680M beat the GTX 1630 by quite a few frames, though the difference wasn't as big, of course. The 1 and 0.1% lows were also better, well, apart from the 0.1% low, actually, so the experience was overall better with the iGPU, but the 1630 did okay, I guess. It's a bit of a disappointment though when it comes to running Cyberpunk. I'd rather play on the Radeon integrated graphics any day. Red Dead Redemption 2 was a very close result, but this time the GTX 1630 just about edged it and the percentile lows were a lot better. I noticed a few more little dips and drops with the integrated 680M here, but that's not to say it still wasn't a very solid result indeed and it even held up very well during my experience in Valentine and Saint Denis. These results are from the in-game benchmark test, of course. In GTA 5 at 1080p with the high settings and FXAA, the GTX 1630 actually came out on top here. This was another weird one in a way, I wasn't expecting this much of a difference, and if anything, I expected the 1630 to lose yet again, but here it came out on top with better average and percentile figures. It's very playable on both setups though. Spider-Man Remastered gave us another very close result. The frame rate on average was within what I'm going to call a margin of error. It was 1 FPS more with the 1630, but there's no in-game benchmark tool, so I sort of had to try and redo my steps, you know, do the same thing in both scenarios, so this could definitely have affected the performance metrics a little bit. Either way, it's still a decent result for both setups here at native 1080p, considering the hardware we're working with, of course. Finally then, Crisis Remastered, another close result, although the 1% low was better for the 680M iGPU. The 0.1% sort of fell apart with both, but there we go, the average 4 FPS higher with the 1630. Overall though, I mean, it goes to show how far integrated graphics have come. Very impressive from the Minis Forum PC. It's important to remember that these graphics solutions aren't really similar in specs. I just thought it would be interesting to see what the current best integrated graphics can do compared to what is currently one of, if not the weakest, desktop graphics card. It's a bit of a fun one really, but some interesting and surprising results came out of it nonetheless. Integrated graphics have certainly come a long way, and it's safe to say that at the moment, if you want to talk equivalents, then the 680M inside the Minis Forum UM690 is comparable to the GTX 1630, and therefore the 1050 Ti as well. Not sure about the AMD side of things, but the RX 6400 will be faster in PCIe 3 and 4.0 systems, in case you were wondering. To conclude, the UM690 is a great mini PC, and I've enjoyed my experience with it today, because it's amazing to see just how far integrated graphics have come. If you enjoyed this one, then leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to, of course, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.